I haven't had a lot to say about the Apple Vision Pro, but what I have said, well, I've been unabashedly assertive about it. For months ahead of its release, I've had people asking me if I thought the Apple Vision Pro might be the next frontier for watching movies and TV shows and playing video games. Will it be better than watching the best TV? Will it be better than watching a movie on a projector and screen? Is the Apple Vision Pro going to be better than the best movie theater you can visit? My answer has always been a resounding no. My potent powers of tech punditry and prediction allowed me to determine without ever having tried the Apple Vision Pro that it would never be able to replace a quality home entertainment system, let alone a premium commercial theater, if only for one very important reason. So was I right? Or am I about to eat a big fat slice of humble pie here? Let's find out. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is not an Apple Vision Pro review because you don't need another Apple Vision Pro review. I mean, never mind that John Prosser says he's made the only Apple Vision Pro review that you ever need to watch. There are countless hours of tech vloggers picking this device apart piece by piece, sometimes literally, I'm looking at you, Jerry Rig everything, in ways that I never could. Marquez has a full suite of Vision Pro videos, as does Brian Tong and countless others. Nope, I'm not here to do that. I'm here to talk about the merits of the Apple Vision Pro as a replacement or alternative to your TV or projector or home theater system in ways that, frankly, I've not seen others do yet. But there's more. See, the Apple Vision Pro is capable of doing something for watching movies that no other home entertainment device can do yet. And nobody's talking about it, but it's a game changer and you're going to hear about it first right here. So if for no other reason, stick around for that. Now, before I get into the sight and sound experience that you get with the Vision Pro and compare it to other forms of AV entertainment, I need to tell you a bit about what my experience with this device has been like. It is crucial that you understand that for context, but also I have a responsibility to tell you in the interests of sound journalism. This is not my Apple Vision Pro. This headset was lent to me by someone else because they wanted me to experience something very specific. That thing that nobody is talking about that we're gonna talk about. And if you know anything about Apple Vision Pro, then you know this device is not set up well for sharing. It does have a guest mode, yes, but that guest mode presumes that the owner is around to make a handoff. And for the vast majority of the time I've been using the Vision Pro, or at least trying to use it, the owner has not been here, which has made using this thing challenging to say the least. We'll get into whether I'm gonna buy one now that I've experienced it in a moment. For now, I just need you to know that the first few hours of using the Vision Pro were extremely unpleasant for me. So much so that for a couple of days, I dreaded the idea of putting it on. I wanted so much to just pack it back in its box and send it on its merry way. But I'm glad I kept after it. See, as you may have heard, Vision Pro is designed to be customized for one user. From the light guard to the eye tracking tech to the Apple account it's tied to, it's really meant to be bespoke for one. When I put this Vision Pro on, it's expecting somebody else. The lenses inside are calibrated for somebody else's eyes carefully spaced to line up the focal point of the lenses to that person's pupillary distance, or PD, a term I learned in a prior life as a licensed optician. No, really, I was a licensed optician while I was in college. Anyway, just entering the pin code to unlock this thing was among the most frustrating and infuriating experiences that I've ever endured because it could not track my eyes correctly, and I can't pinch on the correct numbers. Even when I did manage to get it unlocked, it never felt like it was working right. It always felt like it was for somebody else, like wearing someone else's prescription glasses, even though this Vision Pro doesn't have the prescription lenses that you can put in it. It just felt like putting on somebody else's glasses. So much so that wearing the Vision Pro made me feel sick. And I don't just mean a little queasy. I mean that I was basically useless for a couple hours after wearing this thing for just 10 minutes. Never really did figure that out. Honestly, guys, there were times I wanted to throw it across the room, especially because if I dared to take it off, I had to go through this whole song and dance 
from the very beginning, every single time. Eventually though, I got it dialed in. It's taken me four times longer than it should, but finally I got to see what everyone else has been seeing. And wow, just wow. Now the display and imaging professional in me is tempted to run down a list of the Vision Pro's technical hits and misses. I could talk at length about chromatic aberrations, field of view limitations, and perceptual quantization execution, but I don't think that's valuable. Instead, I want to hone in on the audio and video experience. And to do that, I want to start by talking about how Vision Pro delivers its environments. You can go to Joshua Tree, uh, the moon, or even Mount Hood, Oregon, which sits just 54 miles as the crow flies from where I'm sitting right now. I have sat right about where this Mount Hood image was made and enjoyed this view in real life. And I'm not overstating things when I say that visually and audibly, this is about as close to actually being there as I can imagine experiencing without actually being there. When we get Smell-O-Vision figured out, I mean, forget it. Smells like strawberries. Exactly. I, of course, don't know what it would be like to be on the moon, but I mean, the feeling I get when I load up this environment is it's eerie, isolating almost. It is not hard, nor does it take long for you to suspend disbelief, which I think is the main reason why you're hearing so many people raving about how Vision Pro looks. But how? How is Apple pulling this off? Well, here's where I will get into some of the technical stuff a little bit. The displays Apple is using here are excellent. The pixel pitch, and by that I mean the density of the pixels, the cramming together of tiny, tiny, tiny pixels, is so small that there is no chance that you're gonna see pixels. There are some 11.5 million pixels for each eye, and this is why you hear others talking about the utter lack of screen door effect. That's a huge contributor toward the creation of a convincing representation of reality. I think the other most significant factor is that these are OLED displays, micro OLED technically, which means that there are no LED backlights to muck up the image. Blacks are perfectly black, so the contrast is off the charts, technically infinite. Also, due to the proximity of the eye to the screens and the perfectly dark environment, presuming you have a good fit, these displays don't have to get nearly as bright as a TV or a monitor in order to be perceived as bright. In fact, I imagine that was one of Apple's trickier challenges when calibrating these displays. There's a razor thin line to tread between representing reality and maintaining comfort. In real life, spectral highlights can be uncomfortably bright. If you've ever caught the sunshine off a ripple in a lake, you know that glint of light, it, it can be too much. And I don't think Apple wants to represent reality quite to that level. And so the visual experience isn't exactly like reality, more of a safely comfortable version of it. But it is impressive and enjoyable all at the same time. I mean, like I said, it already looks hyper realistic. But I should mention too that Apple has some headroom here. These displays absolutely could get much brighter than they're being allowed to do right now. So I suppose that as HDR content grading evolves, these displays could look even more hyper-realistic than they do right now. And that is just mind-blowing to think about because they're so good already. Just that improving HDR images themselves could result in even more impressive visuals for the Vision Pro. I mean, what are you gonna say? Finally, color accuracy. I'm not able to measure the output of these displays with the equipment I've got, nor do I think I could even afford the spectrometer that could do it. But subjectively, based on over 15 years now of evaluating displays, I feel pretty comfortable saying that the Vision Pro delivers remarkable color accuracy. I'm not sure it's targeting what we call D65 white point, but that's probably for the better, at least in terms of trying to mimic reality with these displays. The visuals are just part of the environment experience though. Audio plays a huge role as well. Now I'll get into the fidelity of these so-called audio pods here in a moment, but right now I just wanna to communicate to you how integral the spatial audio experience is to the environments that Apple has created. This notion has been well covered, but just a quick reminder that audio can make or break or transform 
how we perceive images. I think we've all seen viral videos where some dramatic, dark, or even scary movie scene has been made comically hilarious simply by replacing the soundtrack with jocular music. And it works the other way around too. Apple has done, I'm not overstating this, a masterful job of creating audio accompaniment to images that culminates in really putting you there. The grit of shifting sand below your feet while the wash of wind swirls around overhead. The eerie stillness of the air sprinkled with the chirping of birds on Mount Hood. It's all very enveloping. No doubt, Apple's implementation of spatial audio is the unsung hero of the Vision Pro experience. But how does all of that translate to movie and TV watching? Is the 3D reality of Apple's environments successfully transferred to 3D movies? And how does just 2D content look? And how does it sound compared to a surround sound system? Can Vision Pro replace or even best a quality home theater? I spent more hours than I can count comparing the Vision Pro movie watching experience to the home theater experience I have available here in our studio. I've got the Sony A95L 65 inch TV here, along with a 98 inch TCL QM8 TV and a Samsung Q990C soundbar surround system, which I can use as a reference point since I've compared it to much more elaborate Dolby Atmos surround systems. So first, let me talk about scale. The idea is that the movie screen that you see inside the Vision Pro can be scaled up to what should appear to be a 100 foot wide cinema screen. It can support multiple aspect ratios and formats, including Super Panavision 70 millimeter. Now, I gotta wonder, is there something wrong with me? Because I keep hearing folks raving about how it's just like being at a theater with the scale just being off the charts. But I don't know, maybe in time I'll relax into it, but I just couldn't get around the feeling that I was really looking at a small screen that was very close to my eyes. Does that make sense? Maybe that's it. Maybe the problem is that the spatial depth of the environment threw off my perception of the size of the screen. But all I can say is that for me, it didn't feel the same as being in a big room looking at a big screen. It is definitely not the spatial audio's fault though, that's for sure, because while the scale of the movie viewing experience didn't exactly jibe with me, the Vision Pro is exceptionally good at making it sound like I'm in a big cinema room. That's where the spatial audio really came through for me. It's an environment with which I am intimately familiar and I felt like the Vision Pro spatial audio really nailed replicating that experience. I do have to say though that the fidelity of the sound is far better with AirPods Pro than it is with the audio pods that are built into the Vision Pro. The Vision Pro's built-in speakers do amazing things, don't get me wrong, but I get the feeling that Apple tuned them to work with as wide a variety of anatomical conditions as possible. Everyone's ears are a different size and shape and they sit in different places on the head, especially relative to where the audio pods are located on the Vision Pro. That's a lot of variables to take into account. As a result, my experience with the Vision Pro's audio fidelity was that the treble was a bit harsh or ringy and sibilant, and it lacked the bass I wanted. The latter of which really wasn't a surprise, but put in a set of AirPods Pro? Yeah, now we're cooking. What an experience. As for video fidelity, I know the Vision Pro has the chops, but somehow I think the way movies look on Vision Pro could be even better. It's excellent as is, but somehow the Sony A95L here pulls off HDR highlights better than the Vision Pro did for me. Maybe Vision Pro needs to take the training wheels off the peak brightness a bit, or more likely content needs to be graded to look better on Vision Pro because I know the Vision Pro can do it. I've seen it in the environments, but somehow that amazing visual experience that you got with environments doesn't seem to be carried over for watching movies on Disney Plus, Netflix, and Max, even with HDR. Now, the 3D experience? Well, look, it's the best 3D movie experience that I've ever had. But with that acknowledged, it's clear that it could be even better. In the same way that Apple is shooting its environments and custom content with special cameras, I think Hollywood should do that too. Yeah, it's gonna be expensive, but movies are already ridiculously expensive to make. Might as well just pile this on top. 
I believe that when 3D video content is made for the Vision Pro and not just adapted for it, 3D movies will reach a level that we've always dreamed that they should be. So does the Vision Pro beat out a home theater or commercial cinema? In some ways it does, and in other ways it, it doesn't. I'll get back to that because, well, there's just one more thing. This is something nobody else is talking about. And at least in the context of the Vision Pro as an entertainment device, I think it's critical. You need to know about this. Right now, if you pull up the Disney Plus app on the Vision Pro and you watch Titanic, Avatar, or to a slightly lesser extent, Avatar The Way of Water, you can experience something that I think will transform the home movie watching experience forever. What those three titles have in common is, well, yes, James Cameron, but also something called True Cut Motion. I'll release a deeper explanation of Pixelworks True Cut Motion in another video, but for now, I think the best way to describe True Cut Motion is by, it's like VRR, or variable refresh rate, but for movies. See, when we watch movies at home, we're watching content that has been recorded at 24 frames per second. This is the cinema cadence we've been enjoying at theaters for decades now. But at home, when watched on TVs with 60 hertz or 120 hertz refresh rates, that 24 frames per second content tends to cause some motion problems. Chief among them is judder. That's where sometimes slow panning shots seem to shudder or judder as if frames have gone missing. Then there's stutter, which is sort of a flashing or strobing effect that happens with TVs that have instant pixel response times. As an image moves across the screen and a dark area becomes a light area, the instant response time of a displaced pixels makes that slow panning shot introduce sort of a flashing effect, which we perceive as stutter or artificial shimmer. TV manufacturers have tried to deal with these distracting effects with something called frame interpolation or motion interpolation. But as many folks will be quick to point out, Tom Cruise chief among them, this motion smoothing causes movies to look like cheap soap operas, hence the term soap opera effect. True Cut Motion addresses this by allowing movie makers to, well, think of it as changing the frame rate of their movies on the fly, so that when smoother motion is needed, the frame rate can speed up a bit to keep it smooth and then drop back down so that it continues to look like a movie. I think Peter Jackson and James Cameron's always on 48 frame per second movies would have been less off-putting to people if they weren't always on at 48 frames per second. Anyway, I'll describe how it works in that other video, but the net effect is outstanding. Finally, those who wanna get rid of Judder at any cost and those who absolutely cannot stand soap opera effect can be united behind a solution that eliminates Judder without bringing in soap opera effect. You can only see it, again, for now, on Apple Vision Pro. It can be seen in theaters. In fact, if you wanna go see it for yourself, go check out Kung Fu Panda 4, where True Cut motion grading was used for the cinematic release of that movie. But the real advantage will be for us watching movies at home, because soon, True Cut Motion will be making its way into TVs and ideally be available from streaming services and on Blu-ray discs. It's gonna take time for the catalog of content using True Cut Motion to grow. But folks, this is a game changer in my book. And to bring it back to the Vision Pro, this is where you can experience it for the first time. Disney Plus on Vision Pro, that's where it's at right now. So is the Apple Vision Pro better than a commercial theater or home theater? In some ways, it can be. It's got some real magic going for it. And I think it's gonna get even better. I was definitely wrong though, when I said it could never stand up because it is so isolating. While I do think there is something irreplaceable about the camaraderie involved in enjoying TV and movies in the company of your friends and family, be that at home or in a commercial theater, something the Vision Pro just can't allow. I also see that the Vision Pro's greatest achievement is that it enables you to exuberantly enjoy a deeper connection to something that you love at times when you are already isolated or alone. In the end, I think trying to decide if the Vision Pro is better than a commercial theater or home theater is the wrong question. It's about the completely unique experience that you can only get from something like the Vision Pro. 
I really do think that it is a part of our future of entertainment, maybe not the definition of the future of entertainment. Regardless though, it is definitely something worth checking out. Am I gonna buy one? I feel like I have to. I mean, as I go through and evaluate televisions and projectors and whatnot, I feel like I need to see what the Vision Pro is doing. It is definitely part of the future of home entertainment, and I'd be irresponsible not to own one at this point. Thanks, as always, for watching, everyone. What did you think of this video? It was a little bit of a deep dive. Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like. And until then, here's two it. <laughs>